Okay, today we are going to learn about the fluid mechanics. What is a fluid? Well, we really don't know how to define a fluid. But we know how can we differentiate the fluid out of solids. How do we do it? Well, that's what we are going to discuss today. It's about the first topic and fluids and their properties. So we identify a fluid by looking at the properties of the fluid. So let us talk about the basic properties. Starting with density. What do we mean by density? I'm sure we all know the basic formula which we have used to calculate density. It is mass divided by volume. <clears throat> However, let us go beyond that formula. We define the density. Density is the quantity of matter in a given volume of fluid. Now, based on that definition, we can go for three forms of densities. One is mass density, the second one is specific weight, and the third one is the relative density. Now this specific weight can also be defined or not noted as specific gravity. <coughs> we'll now look at the mass density. It is denoted in Greek rho letter. It's like a curl P. And it is the mass of the substance per unit volume. If we go with the international or metric units, we will have the units of mass as kilograms per cubic meter. And if we transfer or if we convert the units to the dimensions, it is going to be ml minus 3. Now we'll look at specific weight denoted by W and defined as the weight per unit volume. Now look at the difference between mass density and specific weight or specific gravity. In specific weight, we consider the weight contrast to mass in the mass density. So you can formulate the units and dimensions accordingly. For example, the units are going to be newtons per cubic meter instead of kilograms per cubic meter. Uh, in the same way, we can obtain the dimensions. It is ml minus 2, t minus 2. Now we will move to the last form of density. It is relative density. And it's the ratio of mass density of a substance to some standard mass density. In fluid mechanics, we use water to be this standard mass density. We use sigma to denote the relative density. And sigma is equal to the mass density of the substance divided by the uh, mass density of water. Mass density of water at 4 degrees Celsius. Now, um, why do we select rho at 4 degrees Celsius? We know numerical value is 1000 cubic kilograms per cubic meter. A rounded value, we would like it. However, please search for the important features of water when it is, its temperature is at 4 degrees Celsius. 
important tips you can't find any units therefore you can't find any dimensions to the relative density now we'll move to another property that is viscosity viscosity is tendency to resist for flowing freely it is just like a um, friction do we like friction or do we want friction well without friction we won't be able to walk similar concepts apply to the liquids or fluids we can differentiate viscosity into two forms one is dynamic viscosity and the other one is kinematic or kinematic viscosity the dynamic viscosity and coefficient is given as the shear per unit area or shear force per unit area required to drag one layer of fluid therefore the definition brings us this formula where we denote dynamic viscosity coefficient in mu that's like italic m with a, a, a long leg mu is equal to tau divided by d v over dy tau is the shear stress and dv over dy is the change of velocity in y axis so you can obtain the um, unit dimensions for this dynamic viscosity now important values we are you don't really have to remember mu of water is 10 to the power minus 3 kilograms per meter per second now what is kinematic viscosity okay it is denoted by a mu even though it is italic v the greek letter is mu now it's the ratio of dynamic viscosity to mass density see mu is equal to mu divided by rho that is the famous formula which we are going to use it now please search why we have two viscosity terms and coefficients there should be a particular reason we'll move to the next topic that is surface tension okay denoted by sigma now before we go to the definition let us look at these pictures now how these could be happen a paper clip is floating on water surface and a water strider can walk on water surface to happen these there should be an upward force from the water surface why because we know we have a um, weight of these objects like the paper clip or the water strider acting downwards so there should be something balancing that force and therefore there should be an upward force from the water surface how that can be happen now let us go to the physics of this surface tension. Now let us consider two uh, water molecules. As you can see, two water molecules under a water column. We know these two molecules have attractive forces to each other. And also we know uh, from your high school physics and uh, you know